Today, we're once again talking about my two favorite topics, that is AI and edge functions. Now, if you remember, in the last launch week, we've shipped AI inference uh, within Superbase Edge functions natively. So this is very exciting. If you haven't you know, heard about this before, go watch um, this video. I'll, I'll uh, link it below. Um, but then also we've been exploring, um, you know, kind of, you know, inf inference is kind of one thing using sort of GTA small, um, smaller models. But then we're also exploring using larger language models um, within edge functions. Now, obviously, there are certain limits to what you can do within the edge function itself. So um, we're kind of building out sort of the, the GPU infrastructure that actually allows you to sort of communicate with, you know, larger language models in the edge runtime. Now, while this is going on, you can, of course, still use other services um, to, you know, kind of outsource sort of the AI workloads um, outside of the actual edge function and just, you know, use an API. And so one interesting API for that is um, Amazon Bedrock. Now, with an Amazon Bedrock, you can use um, Amazon Titan or, you know, various different other models. Uh, I actually wrote a blog post about this and there's a, there's a video on this as well. I'll link it below. Um, how you can use that with um, Superbase Vector and um, specifically, you know, kind of implementing image search uh, in Python. Now, I know a lot of you, you know, like to use edge functions and edge functions use TypeScript, um, at least at the moment, uh, you're, you're somewhat limited to using TypeScript within edge functions. Now, what's really neat is that uh, Amazon Bedrock has uh, a Bedrock client um, in JavaScript. So you can use JavaScript to interact with the Amazon Bedrock API. And you know, Amazon Bedrock has a lot of different um, models available. So here we have the different Titan models. Um, Claude is available, uh, Llama, Mistral, Stable Diffusion. So there's a bunch of different things that you can use. And then, you know, in order to get started, so officially, um, the Petro client only supports Node.js environments, which makes sense, right, for, for Amazon. Kind of mostly people will be using it within Lambda functions, but you can also make it work within Edge functions. As always, you can find the code below, but let's uh, jump right in. So the way we can actually load um, you know, node mod modules from NPM. So the AWS um, Bedrock client. So that's the client um, Bedrock uh, runtime there. So we can load that from NPM. Then also we want our Superbase JS client. Um, and from NPM, you also want this um, Base64 array buffer. So we'll, we'll get back kind of a Base64 uh, string when we're generating images um, from with Bedrock. Uh, and then one thing to watch out for is that um, the AWS SDK for Node requires um, some configuration files. Um, so to be able to access these files, now within Superbase Edge Runtime, there is no file system access because these are edge functions. They are, you know, spun up uh, all over the globe um, at split seconds. So um, we don't have access to a file system. So what we need to do is we need to mock the file system specifically for these um, two files. So AWS config and um, AWS credentials. Now it, um, it will look for these specific environment variables, which is AWS shared credentials file and AWS config file. So we'll set that to um, the same, you know, we'll have here. So we basically mock these files to be available. And then what we can do is we can initialize our bedrock runtime client, and we'll need to set our credentials. So we'll need our access key ID, our secret access key. Uh, and in my case, I'm working off of um, this uh, super base demo, um, AWS workshop studio, so I can get my credentials um, from right here. Um, otherwise, you might need to set up your um, credentials via I uh, am I believe. But so I'll just copy the credentials over real quick. 
Okay, so now that we have our credentials set up in our dosh env file. Next thing we need to do is we need to um, open our AWS console, and we need to enable the models that we want to use. So in our console, we'll go to Amazon Bedrock, um, we'll click get started. And then there is here, um, request model access. And so here we can see kind of all the models that are um, available to use kind of within sort of this managed service. And in this example, we want to generate some images. So we'll just want this uh, Tyson image generator G1 here um, available to request. So what we'll need to do is uh, request model access. So here we'll request this one. And then we can say submit. And so now we have the access granted. And so now we can start using this model um, in our edge functions. So we have our bedrock uh, runtime client. The next thing we need to do is so we'll um, get a prompt and um, a seed if we want to, you know, customize the seed, we can put that in there. Um, and then we need to put together um, our input for our invoke model command. Now we'll need to send this as application JSON content type, the model ID for um, this is the Amazon Titan image generator v1. And then we need to send our body as um, a, a stringified JSON. So we'll have the task type text image, we want text to image params, and then we'll pass in our text prompt. And then we can do some image generation config, um, number of images quality, and some things here kind of height width, um, and a seat and um, yeah, so we can then create our invoke model command. And then what we need to do is we need to uh, say just the bedrock client, send our command, and then we'll get the response. Now in the response, we can just quickly check that our status code is a 200. And once we have that, we can get out the body and the metadata from the response. So um, basically, what we then need to do is we need uh, to construct this um, text decoder uh, from our body buffer. And then we get um, a JSON string. And so we can then parse that JSON string to get access to the images um, within our uh, response. So we only have one image here. So we'll then need to upload that. So we don't need to, you know, we can obviously do whatever we want then with the image. But in our case, we'll just upload it to Superbase storage. So we'll need a Superbase client um, from our environment measurables. So these are exported by default. So we can just instantiate our Superbase client. And then using storage, um, we have a public image bucket. And we'll just say we'll just use the request ID dot PNG as the name. And then we'll need to decode the base 64 image. So that's what we're using here the um, base 64 to array buffer. And then we can upload that um, array buffer uh, here to Superbase storage. So as you can see, this um, decode will return back an array buffer and upload does allow us um, to upload an array buffer here. And um, we'll just say content type is image uh, PNG. And then yeah, cache control, we can just control how long this image should be cached. And I will say absurd false. So um, we'll only lay out one, you know, image per basically name. Um, and then yeah, once we have that constructed, and everything was correct, we'll just output the public URL for the upload path. And that is pretty much it. So let's go ahead and run, uh, try this out. So first of all, we'll need to run Superbase start to start up our Superbase service locally. 
Now, one thing to note, I have a migration here that basically just creates an image bucket in our Superbase project. And so now what we can do is, you know, alternatively, if you don't want to um, put this into a migration, you can also go to um, your local Superbase studio and then you can go to storage and you can create a new bucket. Um, but in our case, because we have the migration, we already have our public bucket here. So now our Superbase service is up and running. Next thing we need to do is we need to start serving the Superbase functions with um, the environment variables so that we can instantiate our Bedrock client correctly. Um, so that's up and running. And then we'll run our curl command so let's we'll just say a beautiful picture of a bird. So this is just our curl command to our image gen um, with our authorization, which is our anon key. And we'll just fire this off. And so we can now see, maybe let me make this bigger a bit. So it'll take a little while kind of making the request to bedrock. But so now we're getting back. Um, this is our, you know, body that we're constructing the response for uh, with the images. So here we have our public URL and we can also go to storage. So if we click here, we can see this is the picture of our beautiful bird. So um, maybe we can do one more. I can say a huge cheering crowd at a rock concert. Let's see if that um, gives us an actual crowd. There we are. Okay. All right. It's not not really a huge crowd. Could be any kind of concert here. So, yeah, maybe this is not the best model to use for generating images. Um, you know, there's plenty of other models available but you get the gist. So maybe, um, you know, something like uh, stable diffusion or, you know, something like that would give you, or Claude, you know, um, would maybe give you better results, but I'll leave that up to you to experiment with. Um, you know, just know that is sort of how you can spin up an edge function to call, you know, something like Amazon Bedrock um, generate an image, upload it to Superbase storage. Um, really, really powerful. Not a lot of code to make that happen. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope that is helpful for you. Do let us know in the comments below, you know, what else you want to learn about, um, if it's AI or kind of any other topic, we'd love to hear what you want to learn and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.